It is time for a scientific experiment, and this was inspired by an unbox therapy video. So I've got a glass bowl here, I've got various chemicals here, and the video in question was a demonstration by Lou of a phone cover that contained a non-Newtonian gel. And that meant that the gel was kind of elastic, but when it impacted, it solidified. And I thought, that's quite interesting, because I kind of know what that is. And it got me into the uh, making some slime. So I'm going to show you how to make slime. So here's what we need to make slime, and I'll demonstrate the properties of this afterwards. It's very interesting. It's got really interesting impact properties. So I've got a couple of PVA glues here. Uh, washable glue for schools, it's a white glue, and the sort of industrial glue, the PVA, this one does not work. Let's get this one out of the way. Uh, if you've ever tried making this and it didn't work, then that's possibly where it went wrong. Not all PVAs are made equal. PVA stands for polyvinyl alcohol. Let me just start the ex this experiment. So the scales, I shall null them out, they're on. And I'm going to squirt about, say, 50 grams. Let's uh, see if you can get this to where you can see it. 50 grams. Ugh, I've already gooed myself with this. So let's stick 50 grams of PVA glue into this bowl. So that's about 45, bit more, 49, bit more, and it's not really going to stop. So we've got 50 grams of the glue. It's important to note this is just the ordinary generic kiddie craft glue. The PVA stands originally for polyvinyl alcohol, but once it's actually formed into emulsion like this, it's polyvinyl acetate. So I've put 50 grams of that glue in here. I'm now going to add 50 grams of water. So I'm going to take it up to a total of about 100 grams overall. Slightly over, but that's okay. And I'm going to stir it up. So let's lower this down. Let's get the scales out of the way. They're not needed anymore. Let's get them down. And stir this until it forms a emulsion, a common emulsion. So what we're actually doing here is we're using the PVA, which forms this sort of general sort of translucent white mass. Uh, at the moment, it's forming what are basically long strings of molecules, and that gives it, it means it's a sort of fairly sticky liquid, sticky liquid. But what we're about to do is we're about to crosslink it and turn it into a fairly complex polymer. And to do this, I'm going to get the water out of the way for a start. This is just a bad idea. I will end up kicking the water over and knocking it over on the bench. So now I've mixed that together, we're going to bring in the other magic ingredient. This is a whiskey glass filled with warm water and one teaspoon of borax. The important thing is that uh, it is the borax. It's the boron compound here. And when I add this into this thoroughly mixed up sort of just basically runny, watered down glue, it's going to start cross-linking it. So I'm going to add some in, a decent quantity, not a huge amount, and I'm going to start stirring it. And when I start stirring it, you'll notice an immediate change. It starts jellifying up. And uh, it actually becomes quite hard to stir because it has effectively solidified. And I can demonstrate what's happening here. I'll, I'll do it as a doodle. That's the best bet. I'll just keep stirring that for a moment just to make sure it's all kind of doing its stuff and then I'll just leave it. In fact, maybe I'll just add some more borax just for good measure. I don't think it can do any harm. So it's absolutely swimming in that and suddenly I'm regretting not having a paper towel handy. Right here, let's get on to the science. And I want to point out right at this moment that it's not nerd rage. It's not now red. It's not Cody's lab. It's not super rocket science. So, uh, it's definitely not going to be greetings, fellow nerds. So here's the principle. At, in a, its initial form, its molecules are connected by basically straight bonds. It's a bit more complex than that. They've got other bonds that come off. But the basic thing is that they're not really sort of congealed together as such. But then if you've got several of these bonds in the vicinity... You add the borax, and it's worth mentioning here, I've tried this with boric acid, it didn't work, it just seems to be boric acid seems to be the most receptive of this. It adds in these extra bonds, these boron bonds, that actually tie on like that. And what you end up with is a really strong structure, and the liquid actually turns into a sort of semi-solid, but not quite a solid. So let's see how it's doing. It's, it's doing pretty well, I would say. 
Right, this is where, really, I should go and grab some paper towels. One moment, I'm just going to grab some paper towels. Okay, I have the paper towels. I'll just stick this slightly gooey spoon. I'll just, yeah, I'll just wipe the goo off it and into the bowl. And then I'll stick that in the borax solution just because it's the only place I could really think of sticking it. And pull what's in here out. And what you have is a fairly solid gel. And those of you who know such things will realise that this is the classic flubbery type slime. And once you actually let it sort of sit for a while and it cross bonds completely, uh, I shall bring a paper towel in. I shall put it down here. I'm just spraying this stuff everywhere, aren't I? You end up with a sort of a fairly solid sticky gel that once it's finished, it stops being slimy and it starts being fairly solid. And when it does, it's got very interesting properties, the non-Newtonian property being the most interesting. So that's the point that I'm going to uh, just put this actually back in the bowl because it is rather sticky. And I'm going to bring in some that I prepared earlier. That's very blue petrish, isn't it? For those of you who don't know what I mean by blue peter, it was a kids show in the UK where, because it was a pretty much recorded, was it live? I'm not really sure, but they used to, to save time while recording, they used to have one they'd prepared earlier, like this one that I prepared right now, but this is the one I did prepare earlier. So here is the gel that I've created, this slime, and it's created this sort of almost like a rubbery jelly, very odd texture. Actually, when you handle it, it kind of rings, it resonates, it's sort of, you can feel the vibrations going through it. And it's quite interesting because, as you can see from the shape, it has just flowed like a liquid in that bag. I'll just put the bag out of the way. And likewise, if I was to bunch this up into a sort of big ball, then I was to just leave that sitting on this table. It would effectively, I'll just, uh, I'll just stop this avalanche occurring in the vicinity, it would eventually just, if I was to place it on the table like this, it would eventually just spill out from the solid into a sort of pool of liquid that could then be peeled up again. And to give you an, a demonstration of its properties, uh, I can rip it apart. Don't worry, it will just flow back together again. It's, it's very, very odd. It's like the cornstarch uh, non-Newtonian fluid, except this stuff is much more convenient to handle. And for those of you who grew up in a certain era, you'll recognise this as the classic slime. It's the sort of... There were a couple of variants this slime made. There was the bonded sort of polymer stuff, and there were other chemical versions, including the sort of the silly putty, which was based on silicon oil bonded in the same way, but with a slightly more complex chemical process. Uh, I'm looking for a nice round bit here because I'm about to demonstrate the whole point of this. You see, it's a soft gel, but if I strike it, it actually, it cracks more than anything else. It, it absorbs the impact. It goes solid on impact, which I shouldn't have done that because now I need a, I need a fairly solid compacted bit for this next bit of the experiment. I shall press it together and let it flow for a while in my hands to create a ball. Then I shall get the Stanley X-ray unit and I shall place this gel on my fingers like this. Now, if I actually smack this with enough force that it would actually break my fingers, it doesn't break the fingers, it just physically bounces off. And if anything, it causes fractures in the gel because it absorbed that impact. I'll use another bit for this bit, next bit, next experiment, because it has absorbed that impact. And even using decent force, this is force that would actually cause finger injury. All that happens is the gel spreads the impact across the whole area. And it cross, you know, it, it doesn't matter the direction, it kind of just spreads out. Those impacts on the bench would normally have broken my fingers, probably. They were reasonable enough force. But in this case, it's just spread that about. Because it's gone from being that soft gelatinous state into that hard, solid mass and breaks up, it absorbs that impact. I'm guessing that was ultimately what they were aiming at in that uh, phone case that had it in the corners encapsulated inside the actual housing so that when you handled it, it was soft and rubbery, but when dropped, it would suddenly, it would do that thing that would suddenly go hard and solid and bouncy and absorb the impact. 
But that's how you can make this stuff, and quite frankly, it's quite fun to play with. It's the sort of stuff you find in the sort of fart pots as well, but maybe a softer version. I think you can vary the uh, the amount of cross bonding by the amount of bor boric acid, uh, boric acid, the borax you add, the solution, and you can end up going from a really soft slime to something that's quite uh, breakable and rippable like this, but still flows back into a sort of common mass. And when I stick this, once I've finished playing with it, when I stick it back in the bag, this slightly moist bag here. If I leave that for a while in that bag, it will just flow and it will just basically settle down at the bottom of this bag like a bag full of liquid from being in its sort of fairly solid gelatinous state. It's very interesting, a lot of fun to play with and very easy to make. Um, it's also worth mentioning that the, I don't know if I mentioned this before, the glue that I used is just the plain kids washable glue. That is the most important thing you hear. It has to be just plain ordinary um, PVA glue. This stuff says made in Britain. Scola Quip. It seemed to be a company that did school supplies. It wasn't that expensive. I got this off eBay. Oh, that's worth mentioning. The borax. Uh, you can buy borax off eBay. For some odd reason, it was clamped down on. There was a lot of really weird adverse publicity. Now, borax is a traditional, it's used as a laundry powder, it's used as a, um, it's used as an antifungal additive. It's kind of got slightly flame retarding properties like boric acid, it's the boron element. But it's a fairly inert powder. And it used to be just commonly available. You know, you could go into the local shops and you could buy it. That has changed. Um, the I don't know if this is real or if it's just the pharmaceutical industry doing what the pharmaceutical industry occasionally does when they don't like uh, losing money. But um, they seem to have classified it as being dangerous to reproductive health or something like that. And it's all very vague if you look up for information about it. But they basically managed to get it sort of banned, and this was helped by uh, the slime itself. The, there was a story going about how some kid had a terrible skin reactions and its mother finally discovered it's because it was making lots of slime up and the boric acid was killing the kid by destroying its hands. I am very sceptical about that. But the good news is that after a long period of time that you couldn't get borax online, you can now buy it readily, readily on uh, eBay if you type, do a search for uh, borax. But note, do not go for the borax substitute. It's just, it's, I'm not even sure what borax substitute is, but it doesn't do what borax does. So uh, that's another of those chemicals you should stock up on. You should get yourself some borax because it's a, an extremely useful chemical. And that is what you can do with it uh, with some generic cheap white school glue. You can make this non-Newtonian gel that absorbs impacts and just is quite fun to squish and play with uh, because it's got very odd characteristics. But there we go. From unbox therapy to complex molecular bonds, cross-bonding polymers that are available just off the shelf and, and pretty much... You know, it's very hard to go wrong with this. The only time I've had a problem with it was when I used that industrial PVA glue. And there's something about that. It just doesn't work. It has to be the traditional washable kids school PVA glue. But as you can see, it sustains quite significant impacts and spreads that force. Very interesting material. A lot of fun to play with.